there are three possible potential patient populations which in my perception are to be considered for the treatment of latent TB infection. One is the general population which is which has a huge burden of uh, latent TB infection in such countries like India. Maybe 40 to 60 percent of them are in fact harbor latent TB infection. That's one, one potential population. Second is patients who are traditionally considered to be at a high risk of uh, progression to active tuberculosis. Like uh, people who have underlying lung disease like silicosis or underlying systemic diseases like diabetes mellitus or chronic renal failure who are on hemodialysis or intravenous drug abusers, people who are alcoholics and so on and so forth. Such high risk population and not to leave behind children who are close contacts of uh, patients with uh, smear positive tuberculosis. This high risk population again uh, needs a therapeutic intervention which definitely reduces the risk of them progressing to active tuberculosis. The third population which is often not well appreciated is uh, the population of healthcare workers which includes both doctors, nurses and other paramedic workers who are in several studies have been shown to have an exorbitantly high risk of uh, developing tuberculosis including the drug resistant forms of tuberculosis. There is an existing recommendation in the national program which recommends that uh, close household contacts, uh, that children who are less than six years of age, who are the children of patients uh, with the sputum smear positive tuberculosis living with them in the same house, should be treated, should be provided uh, prophylactic treatment to prevent the active tuberculosis, irrespective of their tuberculin status. Of course, it's uh, preferable that a tuberculin test is performed that predicts a much higher risk of uh, progressing to active tuberculosis. But unfortunately, when it is uh, rolled out in a public health program mode, it may not be feasible to do tuberculin skin test and detect a subgroup who might benefit the most. But at the same time, it should always it should also be underlined. The fact should be underlined that tuberculin skin test may not detect all people with uh, uh, latent TB infection. So from that point of view, uh, all close contacts who are less than six years have to be non-selectively treated for the prevention of uh, tuberculosis. Currently, uh, the standard of care for latent TB infection is uh, administration of uh, daily uh, isoniazid uh, treatment for six to nine months. And uh, there are a few problems uh, uh, with this. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, most of the patients who are put on uh, daily INS treatment, uh, they are not able to complete uh, because of uh, compliance or adherence issues. Secondly, the serious adverse event noted is uh, occurrence of uh, hepatotoxicity, uh, which is sometimes quite lethal. We looked for uh, randomized control trials, which compared any alternative treatment uh, with uh, INH isoniazid as the control arm. The alternatives could be any rifamycin, including rifampicin, rifabutin, or rifapentin, either alone or given in combination with INH. We found 10 trials which evaluated, uh, five of them evaluated rifampicin alone given with, uh, with isoniazid, and uh, four trials which compared rifampicin plus isoniazid with isoniazid and three trials which compared rifampicin plus pyrazinamide with isoniazid and one single trial which compared rifapentin plus isoniazid with isoniazid. Interestingly, we found that uh, most of these regimens, particularly uh, rifampicin given alone for three to four months, is equally effective as the standard isoniazid given for six to nine months. Uh, they were not specifically designed to demonstrate uh, equivalence or non-inferiority, but we did not find any statistically significant difference in the risk of developing active tuberculosis in patients who took rifampicin for three to four months as compared to people who took uh, isoniazid for six to nine months. But of course, there, were, there was a serious imprecision in this estimate, uh, though, so the quality of evidence was uh, rated as low, but there is uh, no reason to presume that uh, uh, rifampicin based regimen which is shorter will be any inferior. We also found that uh, the, such a rifampicin based regimen 
when rifampicin alone is given for three to four months has a substantially lower risk of uh, liver toxicity and that possibly uh, it indeed uh, translated into higher rates of uh, treatment completion. That way uh, rifampicin alone regimen seems quite promising for the treatment of late I will say that uh, when one talks about efficacy, uh, they were as efficacious as uh, uh, administration of uh, INH for six to nine months. So, uh, but actually one, one talks about cost, so it is actually in terms of uh, savings also that uh, uh, rifampicin uh, uh, single administration of this drug uh, scores over INH administration. Uh, unfortunately, none of the trials uh, were uh, uh, conducted in uh, high border countries like India, China. All the 10 trials were conducted in countries like uh, Spain, developed world like uh, United States, Canada and uh, uh, Hong Kong of course one trial of silicosis was conducted. None of the trials uh, recruited patients from uh, low income, high burden, high TB burden countries. So that way it may not be directly, defined. these findings may not be directly applicable but these findings do have some lesson for uh, high burden TB. Hepicin administration will certainly score over uh, INH monoresistance uh, because there are pockets, for example, when you talk about India, there are pockets uh, where actually uh, monoresistance is to the tune of 37%. Uh, uh, that is 37% of people are resistant to INH, INH. single drug? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, therefore, it seems that, uh, as actually it seems that there is uh, no uh, single diagnostic test or the gold standard test for the diagnosis of latent TB uh, infection. We can only go uh, assumptions and it looks like that individuals might have been infected by people who were having monoresistance to INH. So therefore, it become, uh, becomes more logical to give uh, patients uh, rifampicin for four months as a single drug as compared to INH or INH uh, with rifampicin. Yes, that's uh, always a potential concern when we use uh, rifampicin as any, for that matter, any drug as a monotherapy for the treatment of latent TB infection. Many of them might in fact have uh, active tuberculosis which is not that much overtly symptomatic and if you end up treating them with monotherapy, theoretically at least you can promote the emergence of uh, drug resistance. But uh, in these trial settings at least at least 40 patients developed active tuberculosis while after at least when they have, they have taken rifampicin or after they have completed rifampicin treatment and in none of the instances a rifampicin resistance was documented except one case of rifampicin resistance which was encountered in a HIV infected patient in the trial on rifampicin. Otherwise in this trial setting there is no evidence to suggest that it promoted the emergence of uh, rifampicin but one should be cautious when such programs are implemented in the real world settings where monitoring is going to be less rigorous and patients may not be that much adherent and the system may not be that much robust in ruling out uh, active tuberculosis. So one has to be really careful when it is going to be uh, extra used as a public health intervention. One should really be on the watch out for it. Uh, whenever you talk about latent TB infection in India or high TB burden countries, I think the first important point to be noted is that uh, one must be very much sure that one is not dealing with active TB. Okay. That is a very important point. Uh, one should be very much sure that active disease has been ruled out. Only then actually you give uh, 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 treatment for latent TB infection. The other thing, the question is very relevant actually when we start using a for four months on daily basis uh, for latent TB infection. Yes, I agree with you that uh, there are chances uh, that if we do not regulate uh, our drug industry or the o OTC sale, etc., then this drug may be indiscriminately used for the treatment of latent TB infection and we might encounter higher uh, level of resistance as far as uh, rifampicin is concerned. And uh, let me tell you that rifampicin is very precious drug for TB treatment. Uh, in addition to policy makers, I think there is a call also on uh, Drug Controller General of India actually here that there should be very stringent uh, rules, regulations and policies uh, that uh, drug supply uh, as far the TB treatment is concerned should not be uh, OTC. It should be with some regulations, prescriptions, etc.
Excellent. Thank you.